In the early 1990s, on the big island of Hawaii, there was a disaster brewing. Like many farmers, Rusty Perry's livelihood was based on the papaya, a sweet tasting fruit and one of Hawaii's most important crops. Then a lethal disease, the papaya ring spot virus, began decimating the plantations. We first found it in, uh, I think it was late 93. And by 94, it was starting to become a real problem. And by 95, we had lost most of our fields. We had uh, about 14 non-family employees. We went down to one. Dennis and Carol Gonzalez, two Hawaiian molecular biologists working at Cornell University, came to see the damage for themselves. It's going to be amazing. Look at that tree over there. Typical symptoms of papaya ring spot. These are the shoestring of the leaves over here. Then look at this ring spot here. This is the, why they call it papaya ring spot. Here. Boy, those fruits are terrible. Yeah, this farmer not going to make any it. money. Nothing seemed to stop the virus. Not physical barriers, not chemical pesticides. And most farmers were resigned that within a few years, the $45 million papaya industry would be gone forever. Back in New York State at Cornell University, Dennis and Carol Gonzalez searched for a solution. They wondered if the cutting edge technology of genetic engineering might help. Genes are the chemical instructions in each cell that govern how plants and animals reproduce and grow. Gonzalez's colleagues had been manipulating them since the 70s. Many medicines, from insulin to AIDS drugs, were now genetically engineered. Perhaps, he thought, the same techniques could help plants as well. Even though plants don't have immune systems, Gonzalez thought it might be possible to protect them against a future infection. Among the many genes making up the ring spot virus, Gonzalez identified one that made a harmless protein in the virus's outer coat. If he could splice this gene into the papaya chromosome, making a transgenic papaya, then perhaps the papaya would be protected in effect, vaccinated against future infection. But how do you get genes into plants? Scientists at Cornell had invented a crude but effective way called the gene gun. The ammunition is genes. The target, a plant. The shot is propelled by compressed gas. Magnified many times, the process works like this. First, tens of thousands of copies of the desired viral gene are made. Next, they're mixed with tiny tungsten balls to which the genes stick. When the balls are fired, the genes are carried along into the leaf. As the balls pass through the plant, some of the genes get inserted into some of the cells. These transformed cells can be grown in culture to become new plants, transgenic plants. Consalves grew hundreds of transgenic papaya plants in dishes and subjected them to chemical tests. In a few, the new viral gene appeared to be working. Now came the moment of truth. Would genetically modified papaya plants be killed by the ring spot virus, or would they resist? The real severe and the best test is after the gene is in, you rub the plants with um, an isolate of the virus to see if it actually indeed uh, withstands infection. This here is the virus infected plant. The effect of the virus is on the leaves and also on the fruit. On the leaves, the leaves instead of being full are narrow and they also show this yellowing here as opposed to the uh, genetically engineered papaya here 
This uh, leaf is a normal looking papaya leaf. It's fully green and the growth is very good. Now the only difference here is that this one plant has the one gene making it resistant to the virus. A decade of work had produced a breakthrough and perhaps saved an industry.